Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to go on to how topography is affected by a number of different factors, such as climate, bedrock, geologic structures, human activities, and tectonic forces. The first one we're going to go into is climate. Remember back from the weathering and erosion unit or the weathering unit that our climate affect the type of weathering. So if it's uh, hot, or cold will affect the type of weathering that we have and the rates of that weathering. And if it's moist or dry, that will also affect the type of weathering that we have. Local bedrock, we're going to be looking at the composition. Because remember, the minerals that make up those rocks will determine how well they are or how resistant they are to weathering. Geologic structures, any sort of valleys or possibly mountains will affect how um, rivers may flow, which will ultimately defect, affect the topography. Human activities, such as pollution, oh, any sort of mining, or he, human activity like that. If there's any number of factors uh, that humans can do to affect the topography. And then, of course, tectonic forces, folding, faulting, or tilting rock layers will affect our topography. New York State can be divided into several different landscape areas and when we go to our reference table, uh, page two here, you can see just the different landscape regions that we have around New York State. Everything from Adirondack Mountains to coastal plains and even the Allegheny Plateau which makes up the Catskills. We have, as you can see here, a huge amount of different landscape regions. And just like we went over in the last screencast, that these different areas have different type of rocks. If we move on to the next page, page three, we can use this chart right here to say, oh, if we look at the Allegheny Plateau within this region, we can correlate that to that little symbol. And then we see it's a Devonian, but it's limestone, shale, sandstones, and conglomerates. So our landscape region, or our bedrock, will definitely be affecting our landscape region. Okay. One of the most important things that we see forming new areas is uplift and erosion. Well, uplift forming areas and erosion taking them back down. A landscape is nothing more than the result of opposing forces. Those opposing forces are uplift, which is going to bring the land up, and erosion, which will bring it down, also known as a leveling force. Here, we can also see how rock types weather differently because the rocks are made up of different minerals and therefore are going to have different resistances to any sorts of weathering. And here we just have, if we look on this right hand diagram, you can actually see this layers that are tilted up in this way. So there's a difference in weathering, the same here, how these layers come up. You can see how some are weathered differently than others. Uplifting forces will be dominant in mountainous regions, which makes sense. If they're higher elevations, that means the land's getting forced up with it and not as much weathering and erosion. Leveling forces will be dominant in our plains, areas where they're relatively flat, and plateaus. Primary leveling force that we're going to see in any of these landscapes is, of course, going to be running water. Running water has this huge ability to take sediments with it and deposit them somewhere else. Other forces include wind, glaciers, but whatever the case may be, all of these are going to be driven by gravity. If the uplifting and leveling forces are in balance, that is known to be in dynamic equilibrium. Basically, the amount of uplifting is equal to the amount of erosion, so then there's going to be no change in the elevation of the landscape. If we look at climate, it could have several different effects on our landscape. So if we look at the one on the left here, this humid climate, we'll see that we'll have gentle slopes. The soil, which is this layer right here, will be the result of more chemical weathering we built up. So more soil, where you'll have a higher nutrient or organic matter to it. Weathering will be mostly chemical. Versus arid, we'll have steep slopes. The soil, sandy, rocky type soil. 
and the weathering will be mostly physical. Okay, so just looking at two different climates, once again, the arid on this bottom right over here, you can see that these steep slopes, sandy, rocky soil versus our humid, which is going to have a more, a finer soil is going to have a higher organic layer to it. A change in climate can also create an ice age. And we're going to hold off here before we go on to the next part talking about ice ages. Hope you enjoyed the screencast. Take care.